union of yen is the limit of mu of yen. We use the, the same argument we just used, but this time the Fi are going to simplify because remember F1 is E1 and Fi in general is Ei intersect union of Ei from, uh, I shouldn't use I here, J from 1 to I minus 1 Ej. Complete. But in this particular situation, what's the union of Ej for j going from 1 to, e to i minus 1, given that my set is increasing? E, it's the last one, right. So Fi in this situation is Ei intersect Ei minus 1, complement. That's what we have. Okay. Now um, we use the same decomposition. Okay. We look at the sum <coughs> of mu of Fi. that mu of the union of Ei, okay, we are looking at finite union and finite sum for the time being. Uh, well, I should first write that this is true, that's because we, we are dealing with Fi's that are disjoint, but then the, the union of the Fi's, as we noted before, is also the union of the EIs. So we get this equality. And now uh, we need to have a look at this thing here. Uh, and what we want to do, OK, so that's, uh, yeah we can rewrite this thing as being, uh, so Ei is Ei intersect Ei minus 1, union Ei intersect Ei minus 1 complement, which, uh, okay, and then mu of Ei is mu of Ei, Ei minus 1, plus mu of Ei, Ei minus 1 complement. But this is uh, Ei minus 1, because Ei is bigger than Ei minus 1. We have uh, the increasing sequence. And therefore, we get mu Ei minus mu Ei minus 1 equal to mu of Ei, Ei minus 1 complement. And uh, this, this is all fine provided our mu of Eis are all finite. Otherwise, I'm, I'm starting to subtract infinity to infinity. I don't want to do that. So we'll come back. So we are assuming here that our mu of Eis are all finite. We see that it's very easy. When they are infinite, the property is, is trivially true. So we don't worry about that for the time being. Now, this turns out to be exactly our Fi, right? So this is mu of Fi. And so this is mu of Fi. And when we have a sum 
of mu of f i, we get sum of mu of e i minus mu of e i minus 1. Now, this is a well-known telescoping sum, right? So, uh, we, well, we get we get the the last the f the the n term, which is mu of the n, and minus uh, the first term, which corresponds to zero. But there is no such thing as E0 here. So we, we could have taken E0 equal to uh, the empty set, okay? because uh, that's, that's all we're doing here. You, you see, we could define this as being uh, E0 complement, which is the whole set. So we, get, we still get a E1 if our E0 is the empty set. So just to make it symmetric, uh, so that all the terms look alike. Now, mu of the empty set is 0. Therefore, we end up with mu of E n. So when we put pieces together, we get what do we get? We get that the sum from of mu of e i, which is the same, well, no, the sum of mu of f i, sorry, is therefore equal to mu of e n, according to our decomposition there. This has a limit. Uh, which is possibly infinity. So how can I justify this? How can I justify that this partial sum has a limit? As n goes to infinity. Think of this as being uh, some sequence Sn, okay? How would you justify that your Sn has a limit? What argument? It's increasing. The, the crucial fact is that Sn is increasing. I keep adding mu of something, and that's uh, positive. So I keep adding positive terms. Therefore, I have an increasing sequence, and we agreed at least I agree on, every time we have an increasing sequence, it has a limit, possibly infinity. Okay? If it's bounded, it's a finite limit. If it's not bounded, it's infinity. So this justifies this limit. And that's a crucial part here on the, in the argument. So make sure you understand this. Because I don't, I have, there is no reason, there is no other reason why this thing has a limit. So it's very important that I know that this side has a limit. Then I'm going to say that mu of e n has a limit as well. And the limit is the same, which uh, by convention we denote infinite sum of mu of f i. And which is also, the mu of the union of Fi's, and this turns out to be mu of the union of the eyes. So it's a little subtle. The reason why we know that mu of e n has a limit is because this is an increasing sequence. Then, the notation for this limit, when you have a series, 
The notation for it is an infinite sum, which is what we write here. Now, by the fact that our FIs are all disjoint, we get mu of the union of the FIs. And now, because we proved before that the union of FIs is the same thing as mu, uh, union of EIs, we have this, this equality here. Okay, so there is a series of different reasons for your different equalities here. Okay, this is the disjoint property of mu, and this is the set uh, fact, the fact that this set is the same as this one. Okay, but this works provided I can I have a finite mu of the eyes. Otherwise, uh, this is not well defined. So let's now what if one mu of the eye is infinity? One or more. Then I cannot do the computation I just did. The algebra breaks down. But if mu of i is infinity, if i is bigger than, uh, if j is bigger than i, I get that mu of e j is bigger than mu of e i, increasing sequence, which is infinity. So, mu of E j is infinity. Now, and uh, actually I could have used the same argument here, uh, what it turns out that uh, the sequence so mu of E j is infinity and mu of the union of EI is also infinity, right? Because one of the sets has infinite measure. Therefore, the union must have infinite measure as well, since we have in one is included in the other. So this is infinite. And uh, in the end, we can say that the limit of mu e i or is infinite and equal to mu of the union of e i. So uh, the reason this time uh, we have also uh, the existence of this limit is again because uh, actually this is an increasing sequence. And I could have used that here because the EIs are increasing. Therefore, the mu of EI is bigger and bigger, and therefore the limit is, exists if we, we, we allow for infinity. So that's why I can write this, and it's going to be equal to that, because they are both equal to positive infinity. So it's kind of odd. I mean, you, you have two terms. Uh, one is infinity, the other one is infinity. We agree that they are the same, therefore. Okay, that's all we're saying here. Okay. Uh, yeah, for your homework, i like you to do So assume that you have a reverse. Now you have a decreasing sequence. So uh, E1 
is bigger than E2, E3, and so on. Show that if mu of E1 is finite, then the limit of mu of EI is mu of the intersection of these different sets. This type of uh, equality serves all the time in probability, for instance, because uh, many times you are interested in computing the limit of uh, probability of a certain event, and you can express it as the probability of something else, which is very useful. Okay, because then you can compute this guy maybe, or the, the other way around. So. Yeah, uh, probability is the particular case where your mu of x is 1. That's when you have a probability space. Okay, not only mu must be finite, it must be equal to 1. And then you, you, that's, that's all you need to do to define a probability measure. So that was one whole problem. And the other ones were... Page And, okay, in order to do that, most of the time you are not dealing with uh, decreasing or increasing sequences of, the, of uh, sets, so that's why we introduce lim sup and lim inf of sets. So assume that you have a sequence EI in M, then lim sup of EI is defined as being, so because it's lim sup, you, you first write union I bigger than N of phi I, and then it's intersection of O N. And lim inf of phi I is the union over O N of the intersection of I bigger than N of phi I. So you define a new set like that. Okay, this is well defined. You and and if you think of uh, lim sub of a sequence, you see that the union is taking the place of sub, and the intersection takes the place of inf. Okay, the, the two operations are replaced like that. But it's really some analogy. I mean, it's not at all the same thing because here, of course, you get a set. Okay? And the reason we use the same notation is because it's going to be very convenient. We're going to have relationships between limb sub of a sequence and limb sub of a sequence of events. So that's why we use the same notation. But at any time, you need to make sure you understand which one is which, because that's uh, fundamental. Okay, so uh, what's the advantage of doing things like that? Well, let's, let's make a few observations. If I call, if Fn 
is union of phi i for i larger than n. What's remarkable about my fn? Okay, I have a new sequence of sets now. And what's remarkable about the sequence fn? Is it, for instance, decreasing or increasing? It's decreasing, right? Because you are, you are chopping off more and more e's from your union. Your f1 is the union over all ei's. Uh, what do I want to do here? I larger than n. So your e1 is this. You take everybody. Now for f2, you start at 2. So you take one last guy. And so on. So your sequence of n is decreasing. And we have a very nice property for decreasing sequences. Right? Limit of this is going to be. So that's all you have to do in the problems. You, you ask her to deal with lim inf and uh, lim sub. But really, what you need to note is that it's this, these guys are form a decreasing sequence in this case, an increasing sequence in this one. Okay, if I call Gn uh, the intersection of Eis, now the Gn are going to be increasing, meaning that G1 is included in G2, which is included in G3, and so on. And the reason why it's decreasing now, it's increasing now, is because the less people you have in your intersection, the bigger the intersection. Okay? If you take off uh, E's from your intersection, well, you have a bigger set, not a smaller one. Okay? Contrary to what happens to you. So you observe this. And then you use the two properties, one about increasing sequences, the other one about decreasing sequences, and you have your homework problems done. OK, that's, that's all you need to do. OK, since we're talking about this, uh, what does it mean for x to belong to lim sub of EI. Well, it means that for every n, there exists an i larger than n such that x belongs to EI. Can I translate this in English? What does it mean? For every n, I can find an i bigger than n so that x belongs to ei. Well, this is equivalent to x belongs to infinitely many eis. Doesn't it? OK. 
okay? Because every time I, f I give myself an n, I can find an i bigger than n so that x belongs to an i. So it's not finite. That's clear. Now, if x belongs to infinitely many i's, well, it means that for any n, I can find an i bigger than n so that x belongs to an i. That's, that's what infinity means. Now, if x belongs to lim inf of e i, then this time we say that there exists an n such that for every i larger than n, e i belongs to, uh, x belongs to e i. So what would be the translation this time? This time you could say that x belongs to all EIs except possibly finitely many. Okay, you can you you may have to throw away the first hand, but then it belongs to all of them. So which set is bigger? Lim sub of E I or Lim inf of E I? Lim sub must be bigger because it's a lot easier to to belong to infinitely many EIs than to belong to all of them, except possibly uh, finitely many. And it's clear from the way uh, this thing is done, isn't it? Certainly this set is included in that one for every n. Okay, so Last project of the day, let's prove that lim sub is included, is bigger than lim inf. Let's see, we do have at the intersection, of course, but that's probably not the right way to start, is included in the union. It's probably. Maybe also we could put some a K here instead. Okay, so if we call this guy a n, we have that a n is included in uh, b k for all n and k. Right, because uh, at least one of these guys 
is the same as one of these. Since I'm taking, well, maybe not, actually. Well, maybe I should think about my proof before. So bonus homework problem. Show that this is included in that. It, it's not difficult, but uh, one needs to be a little careful. And maybe just a double inclusion, you know, that's, that's the easiest way to do it. But it's probably better, a more elegant way to do it. So I'm not sure about my last uh, claim. Yeah, these things, again, are, are quite useful. For instance, there is a, a so-called, and that's quite easy to prove, actually, uh, Borel can tell the lemma in probability, which says the following: If the sum of mu a n is finite, then mu of lim sub of a n is zero, and that tells you, uh, you know, that depending on the dimension here of your sets so on the probability, if they have small probability, then uh, the this set that your uh, x belongs to infinitely many of these guys is going to be zero. Okay, the probability of that is going to be zero. So it's something which is uh, very useful okay, in a number of problems. Questions? So let's stop here.